All right. And welcome back to another installment here on the Lazy Genius Tarot and Bazaar. My name is Alex. If you are new here, thank you for joining us and making this your first stop on the journey. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a walkthrough and VR to Simon at the Hermit's Cave with the Landmark deck. Um, and this is my 100th deck in the collection. Uh, it is the Golden Dawn Tarot. This is the 77 um, first edition. I believe it is the second printing. Um, take a look at the little white book real quick. Yeah, second printing. So if you can see that, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. Yep, second edition. Second printing of the first edition, 1977 uh, Golden Dawn Tarot deck has the two title cards, which actually break down the full tree of life. The cards are in great condition. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. Cards are in great condition. It is a very well-loved deck also. Uh, the person that I got it from before they sold it to me was using it quite a bit. Um, I'm happy that it's in my collection now. Definitely a cool deck. Before we dive into the deck itself, let's take a quick look at the book. Um... And this is also going to be one of the earlier printings. Um, this is actually the sixth printing from 1987. And the book actually has quite a decent amount of information in it. Um, a lot of appendices and tarot spreads. Um, a breakdown of the Celtic Cross, um, breakdowns of the cards and the other spreads as well. There's actually a lot of information in this book. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be one of those decks that I have to take a deep dive through. Uh, put the book back up here on the shelf and... Here are the backs. And let's go ahead and zoom in. There we go. All right. This is the Golden Dawn Tarot deck. I did have to go back through and reorder this deck. Like I said, it was a well-loved deck before it came to me. So it was a used deck. The energy of the deck is still really, really solid. Really like the artwork of this deck. Um, I like the fact that it almost looks like colored pencil. Um, yeah, I really like this deck. Justice at 11. Hanged Man. It's a really interesting death card. Here we have the tower. And around the tower, normally you would have like the pieces of the tower that were falling off. And instead here you see both a white and a black sort of tree of life association with the dots on either side of the tower there. 
So there's definitely quite a bit of symbolism here. Seems to be very much so Rider Wade Smith, um, with a few exceptions. And a lot of symbology. It's almost like a combination of Rider Waite and Thoth. Um, Here we go into the pips. The pips on this deck are quite interesting. All of them are going to have this hand. Um, sort of that hand coming from the cloud. The six. The seven, eight, nine, the ten, and then we move into the courts where we have the princess, the prince, queen, and king. Definitely like real 70s style artwork. Um, again, I dig the whole colored pencil look that we got going on here. Here's the Ace of Cups. Too. I really like the suit of cups in this deck. The way that they break down the pips here. Definitely an interesting take. On the suit of cups as a whole. And then into the courts. The queen. The king. And then into the swords. So if you noticed with the wands, all of the wands were red, all of the cups were blue, you'll notice all of these swords will be yellow. So there is um, the color association here within all of the suits for the element that they are tied to. Yellow being the color of the element of wind. And I like how in this suit, instead of seeing a whole bunch of hands all the way around the card, um, the swords seem to sort of multiply. Where here you see that they have three blades apiece. I like the way that they put them together. Pretty cool. Forgive the dogs. I kind of feel like this would have been real interesting with only three hands, with the three blades. But like I said, I'm going to have to go through the book. This this is going to require a deep dive. Definitely interested. This is a cool 10. Queen of Swords is really interesting. She's holding somebody's head. King of Swords. And then we move here into the Pentacles. So 
It's really dope. Two of Pentacles. There's the three. Four. Yeah, I like the way that you see the progression through the suit. Um, okay. Yeah, I like the progression through the pentacles there. Real minimal. Then here we have the princess. Prince. Queen and the King. That's interesting. The King looks, the King of Pentacles looks quite a bit like the King of Swords. It's going to make me pull out the other Kings. Yep. So it looks like all of the courts sort of follow the same layout there, with the exception of the wands. So that's interesting. That'll be something to look into why there's that difference there. Why is it that all of the other kings, here let's zoom out. Why is it that all of the other kings have wings and then the king of wands is dressed with a cape? Is it just because of the fire suit? Let's see if there's differences between the queens. Okay, it's definitely differences between the queens being mostly that here we see three of them have animals at their side, and then we have the queen of swords holding someone's head. It's probably my favorite queen right now. Let's check the differences between the princes, see if there's anything noticeable there. The only real difference that I notice here is that the Prince of Swords is being drawn in his carriage by two humans rather than animals. I don't think we're going to find too much of a difference in the princesses here. Let's see what we can find though. Not really too much of a difference. Seems like each one is standing in their element. I see two of them have smokestacks of some sort though. I don't know. I'm excited to dive into it. It's definitely going to be a fun deck to get into and work with. Um, definitely happy that it's in my collection now. The card stock on it is, it's actually a pretty decent card stock. It's uh, got a real good thickness to it. It's uh, 
not super glossy i don't know if you guys are getting too much of a glare off of these cards i mean it is a little bit of a gloss to it but it's not super glossy um pretty good thickness on it Let's see how it riffle shuffles oh these cards are still stiff I'm going to have to ask her if she ever riffle shuffled this deck. I think she might have only overhanded it. Oh, yeah. These cards are in great condition for being from the 70s. They're super stiff, uh, stiff still. Um, so you could tell they haven't been beat up with years of riffle shuffling and stuff. Uh, definitely a good deck. And that is... My landmark deck, guys. The 100th deck in the collection. The Golden Dawn Tarot. Um, hope you guys enjoyed looking through this one with me. I appreciate you, as always, for stopping by and spending some time with me as we flip through another deck here on the channel. I definitely appreciate you guys for hanging in there with me. Um, I'm going to start recording the learning series like I've been talking about in the lives recently um, come February so I'm currently working on getting myself ready for that and uh, outside of that you know it's more more content coming to you um, I've loosened myself up off trying to stay stuck to some schedule doing only like two or three videos a week so we're gonna definitely try to up the amount of uh, content that we are putting out i've got a bunch of stuff pre-recorded um but yeah definitely appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me and hopefully i will see you on the next one